I think we're right now with the HA100, we're watching about 28,000 distinct option contracts. Not keeping track of the accumulators, that's a lot of accumulators running. So that's 400 accumulators running right now. So you know, a number of con call contracts, number of put contracts. And then as each trade comes in, it, it, the amount of a paid premium type time, times the contract traded uh, for that moment added to previous accumulated since the opening of the session. Okay. And, and then, so we have four of those and that's how we compute the simple ratio versus, uh, and then the dollar weighted ratio. Again, we do not look at simple ratios. What you see in most places reported is simple ratio. Uh, if they don't say that's what it is, most likely, it would be a smart thing to inquire about it. Okay. So you do not necessarily measure uh, you know, apples with oranges. I get during the day some comments from people on uh, Twitter asking that. Ours is always dollar weighted. Why? Because we want to follow the money. If you have a more sophisticated system uh, and you you spend time and effort building it, why not use it and pursue it and see what it does? Uh, look at the values we've been getting. Uh, the closing, I think, it was seventy one. Um, we you know, when we get a very, very, very high, I mean, very, very low ratio, usually precedes maybe a day of a drop because it's just too much bullishness there, okay? Uh, and uh, if you want to look at it as a leading indicator, okay? If it gets very, very, very bullish. But if it's moderately bullish, you, know, you have a, a bullish move going forward, okay? Uh, we had, I believe this was a 30... 736 area and then we pulled up 71 is the last reading uh, and you could see in the last run up how low these levels were okay and it kept on rolling higher it, it momentarily we pulled back and then we'll continue again now what is the window here let me be clear about that put call ratio dollar weighted has about a three-day window why is three-day it's a difference between the cash settlement of the option for that day versus the hedging a market maker is doing in the in the underlying uh, stock. For that, he's got to pay three days from now. That's where the pressure is. In effect, what we're measuring here is the pressure on the, on the aggregate market makers. Yeah, one more comment also here. We're measuring all six exchanges. We're not looking at SIBO or ICE or this or that. We get our data from OCC direct through Talnet. So we get aggregate data, so we can see because you know you could you could have these routing issues where or routing uh, cleverness if you want to call it, where you know you could be uh, 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 have two set you know some discrepancy or, or or arbitrage if you will between one market or another on certain names uh, in one exchange to another uh, or versus another like ICE versus ISE versus SIBO. What we do is we aggregate all and net them net them out. What we want to see is where which names most are in trouble are trouble across the board. And, you know, depending on how many uh, market makers they have, which exchanges they're in. Uh, so we get an aggregate. You know, these days with the uh, number of uh, the, the sixth number of uh, exchanges for options, SIBO is not the lead anymore. It is still is a very large player. It's about thirty percent, thirty five, thirty eight percent of the market any given day, but if you just go to SIBO try to get that data, that may not give you a total picture. Um, statistically speaking, should be a good should be a good picture, but there's no guarantee. Okay, uh, and for same thing with ICE, and remember they don't report other exchanges data. We don't care. We put all the exchanges in a bucket. We we'll look at it and we post it. I mean, we measure it in real time and see it. And then one derivative of that is our HA100, which is the top 100 names in the equity side based on the following high beta high high market uh, high market cap high beta and also liquidity in option uh, 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 volumes it's itself if uh, if we have a high beta or high, usually if you have high beta you have liquidity but if it's just high uh, big cap it does no guarantee there's huge liquidity and if we watch it that's not there we drop we drop it and replace it with something else that's better uh, <clears throat> now, throughout the day, 
excuse me, throughout the day, I do monitor this as a input for visually what I'm trading, uh, ES and NQs. Uh, the way I see it that makes sense for me and works well is the changes in a uh, HA100 dollar weighted put call, okay? Which is, for example, we open at uh, point, uh, 58, okay? Now, I usually want to look at it no earlier than 15 to 30 minutes after market is open. Why? Because we want to have the opening rotation to be complete uh, and have some stability in various names, so to speak. Because early on, you could have one hedge fund or a couple of hedge funds push the market one way or another in a particular name. Uh, as, and as you know, uh, I've been pounding the table on that. The later in the day, the put call is more valid. That's true across the board. Why? Because more votes are in. Just think of it this way. You don't like the president based on Vermont and uh, New Jersey and Florida. Yeah, that gives you a picture of what's going on. But really, you need for, for California to come in. Okay? Uh, so it's end of the day is more valuable than beginning of the day. But throughout the day, that change, that change could be uh, very uh, um, unnoticeable, a minutia, a, a point one, point two move. But the direction of that change, I've seen a very high correlation with the way SMPs have traded. And as the put call drops, SMPs are rising. Okay? This S as this HA100 number drops, put call, uh, the indices are rising. As HA100 starts picking up, the market is selling. So that's what I see. I do have a little window that looks into the server in California. I'm copy looking at that. Recently, I built a bunch of names underneath it over the few names I want to watch more carefully. And I've got them by sectors. Uh, we do have sector pages available. I'm going to bring them active uh, when I get a chance. i just been, you know, we've had too much going on. And it takes time a little bit to make sure it's tested properly. But basically what I look at so you would know, I'm looking at banks. So four or five names there. Not too many. I remember, I want to stay sens sensitive. So I don't want, I don't want to look at the averages and desensitize the data. But I'm looking at Goldman, uh, put call for Goldman, put call for Morgan, JPM, uh, 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 and like I said, Bank of America type of a deal. And Wells Fargo, that's key. Uh, on the text, I look at Apple, Goog, Amazon, um, a RIM, uh, you, know, uh, the, you know, the four horses, the four horsemen, if you will, Microsoft, Oracle, uh, uh, and Intel. Yeah, kind of a second tier. And then energy, because it's these three that really run the S&Ps. So their put call is critical. If I see something unusually high or low, I do want to dive into that data in today, in today, but right there, kind of react to it before it's out. Why? There's something going on in the option market that's not priced in. I got the data. I want to have an edge. I want to get in there. I want to take a look and see what is Exxon, what is uh, Chevron, uh, uh, Cope, which is uh, Conco Phillips, and recently, of course, BP. I've added Rig, Hal uh, to it just to get a feel of where, where we are. And then a couple of uh, 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 in, in, uh, uh, transportation names like FTX, uh, UPS, uh, and then industrial, IBM and GE. These are components that are making this HA100. There are big players in it. But I want to have some resolution in there where I could see a one or two name is a little bit uh, uh, off balance to get more focus on what's going on to see. Now, is the, do the charts saying something? Is there volume there? Is there chart is misbehaving on a shorter term basis? So that's what I use it for. But uh, anyhow, this is end of the day. I do look at the end of the day. When this thing closes, to see where we are. We're at 71. 71 is fairly neutral. So, you know, no big deal, no big news. Kind of moving forward, we got to see where that goes. Uh, again, if it gets above one, uh, Usually, this is a pretty, pretty nasty mood out there. I think if you could see the high readings we've had before, you could see this low here in uh, or uh, late October. It was a 1.6. The scale is on this end. This is SMP. And of course, you see that that was uh, really uh, the nervousness was so heavy and that was the bottom. All right. 